I've been doing a lot of these ask me anything about software engineering live streams over on TikTok of all places recently. And I've noticed I keep getting asked the exact same questions, mostly stemming from the exact same myths about software engineering. And these are myths that at some point in time I once believed. And I think most software engineers at some point in time believed these myths and were even potentially held back by them. So let me know which of these you believe and hopefully in this video I can help dispel some of these myths so they don't hold you back. The most common question I've been getting by far is, is software engineering oversaturated? And what's funny about this is I remember having basically the exact same discussion back in probably 2016 when it felt like we must have been at the peak of the market, but obviously Obviously, that was incorrect. So what exactly would it mean for a field to be oversaturated? Well, it would mean that there are too many qualified job applicants applying for too few jobs. And Economics 101 would say that this means that the average compensation of these oversaturated fields should be very low. But this isn't what we're seeing. Computer science still consistently ranks as one of, if not the highest paying fields directly out of college. Now, does this mean that we're in the same place as 2021? No, of course not. And does it mean that it's easy to get a job. Also, no, we do actually have data supporting the fact that there are less open jobs right now than there were, say, a year ago. This is saturating the market a bit. It's just more saturated, though. It's not oversaturated. And for one, we've basically seen a complete flatline of the number of open jobs for most of 2023, and we've actually seen a slight increase over the last few months. But also, it's not particularly useful to compare the data of now to data of the past, because guess what? You can't go back to the past. It's far more useful and just practical to look at your options you have right now. And surprise, surprise, computer science still consistently ranks amongst the best college majors as far as job opportunities. And if you just think logically, this should make sense because tech is everywhere. It's not just the Google, Microsoft, and Amazons of the world. Tech exists in every single sector. Your bank, your grocery store, your favorite airline, and pretty much any modern company needs to have a software development team. And this trend is likely to continue because all of these companies need apps, they need websites, and in the modern day, they're starting to need things like machine learning models. And this is going to mean that more and more sectors are going to continue to hire software engineers at the same time as the tech sector will also probably continue to grow. However, to some extent, the requirements for these jobs have actually shifted a little bit over time, but we will talk about that more in a later myth. But first, what about languages? Programming languages are not like Pokemon. You don't need to catch them all. Programming is a core competency to software engineering, and it's easy to then think, okay, I should learn as many programming languages as possible. But this isn't really the case. Programming languages are tools, and ultimately, if you need a new tool for a certain job, well, you should go learn how to use that tool. But just arbitrarily learning how to use as many tools as possible is probably not a great usage of your time. As an example to prove this, most major tech companies don't care what languages you know, and they let you do interviews in whatever languages you want, because the idea is that if you have strong software engineering fundamentals, you can learn more languages in the future very quickly if you need to use them. For example, when I worked at Facebook, I interviewed using Java, but in my entire time there, I never wrote a single line of Java. In fact, I don't think I ever even saw a single line of Java, but this didn't matter. And one of the languages I did have to use was called Hack, and Hack is one I didn't know going in. But guess what? At orientation, on literally day one or maybe day two, they taught us how to use Hack. There was a whole class on it because they knew most of the people they hired did not know this language. All this to say, learning languages can be good, but don't feel held back by not knowing 20 different programming languages because you don't need to know that. And another subject that you probably don't need to know nearly as much as you think you do is math. Computer science is a form of applied mathematics, and software engineering is an application of computer science. So by that logic, you should probably need to know some math to do software engineering. But oftentimes, this isn't really the case. Most developers are going to work in a way where they are far enough abstracted away from the computer science fundamentals that they don't actually need to use any math on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, there are exceptions here. For example, if you work in areas like machine learning or graphics or game development, it's likely you will actually use a lot of math. We also tend to use things like logarithms on occasion for measuring the performance of algorithms, but even this is something we're not going super deep in, and it's mostly just used in coding interviews. And to be clear, if you do decide to do a computer science degree, you will need math to complete that degree, because ultimately, training software engineers is a byproduct of computer science departments. Academia is focused on training computer scientists, and computer scientists oftentimes need a lot of math. But that brings up the next question, do you even need a computer science degree? And this is sort of a partial truth. 
So here's the deal. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Having a computer science degree is the most straightforward way to get a job as a software engineer. There's no way around this. If you go into say a Google office, just ask around. Most of the software engineers will have computer science degrees or related degrees in things like computer engineering, applied math, informatics, or software engineering. So do you actually need one of these degrees? Well, no, you actually don't. Some of the best software engineers I know went to coding boot camps. But just to recognize if you decide to go this path, it is much more difficult to get your first job than it is if you have a computer science degree. And this is where the requirements seem to be shifting a little bit, at least temporarily, because right now there are less open jobs than there were, say, a year ago. And because of these fewer open jobs, employers can be more selective. They have more options. And if you were an employer and you had two options, one person with a six-month boot camp and the other with a four-year degree, all else held equal, you're probably going to go with the person with the four-year degree. And again, that's not to say you can't get a job after a coding boot camp because you can, and I hear success stories on nearly a daily basis, but just to recognize it is going to be a little bit harder that way. Now, there's also the option of self-teaching, and this is also possible, but just like getting a job after a coding boot camp is harder than getting a job after a degree, getting a job after self-teaching is even harder than getting a job after a coding boot camp. The degree or even a boot camp certificate can provide some level of legitimacy to your qualifications. And if you don't have these because you completely self-taught, you might have all of the same skills, but it's much harder for an employer to actually validate that you have these skills, so therefore you are riskier as somebody to actually hire. And again, I don't say this to be discouraging. You absolutely can get a job after a coding bootcamp or even self-teaching, but just try to be realistic with yourself. Just recognize that a lot of the coding bootcamps and a lot of the online programs like to sell some degree of false hope and false promises that can make it feel a lot easier and better than it might actually be, so just be careful. Now, once you land that dream software engineering job, you're going to be rich, right? Well, statistically speaking, speaking, probably not. It's easy to see developers in Silicon Valley, Seattle, and New York with these astronomical compensation packages and to think, wow, what I could do with all of that money. But agree with it or not, where you live is a major component to the compensation you can actually get. To make those Silicon Valley salaries, you usually have to live somewhere where rents are upwards of $3,000 a month, taxes are extraordinarily high, and everything is just more expensive. Now, don't get me wrong, you can make a lot of money as a software engineer and live very comfortably comfortably, especially in the major tech hubs in the United States. And you absolutely can become very wealthy through software engineering over a long career, but just recognize it's not any form of get rich quick scheme. There's also this idea that software engineers spend all day sitting in front of a computer coding alone. And this just isn't true. I've said it before and I'll say it again, software engineering is a team sport. Of course, you'll write a lot of code, but in many cases, you'll spend an equal amount of time, if not even more time, collaborating with other people, deciding what exactly the things are you should be building and deciding how exactly you should be going about building those things. And as you move up and get promoted and your work has more scope to it, you actually start writing less and less code over time until you're barely actually coding at all. There's also lots of other tasks you might be doing throughout the day, such as code reviews, presenting new features, conducting interviews, mentoring younger developers or even interns, writing documentation, and the list just keeps going on. Now, as you try to become one of these more high-level, impactful software engineers, naturally you'll develop a lot of technical skills along the way. So some of these will come in sort of coding implementation skills, and many others will be high-level system design skills. However, there's also a whole host of non-technical skills that are incredibly important towards progressing in your career. For example, learning how to be a better communicator with respect to technical topics, learning how to be a leader of a team, and learning how to be a self-advocate are all vital skills towards being a stronger software engineer. And if you're looking to learn not just how to be a good developer, but how to be a top 1% software engineer, you need to watch this video next. 